Hello, Dota 2 fans. Welcome back. This is Chicago Ted bringing to you CEO Season 6, Week 2 to Day 1. And we've got, right now, Justice versus Guest playing on here. Um, some quick notes about this game. Well, first of all, uh, it was a bit of a long pause between last game and this one. So if you stuck around, well, then you can unmute your sound. You probably wouldn't hear this anyway, so it wouldn't make too much of a difference. But... Uh, if you are just joining in, we had a game that just happened, Union versus Teamwork. I really suggest if anyone uh, wants to go check that one out, it will be a VOD pretty soon. I'll throw that one up tomorrow. But for now, we've got a great game going on, Guess versus the Justice Dyer's League, and we're banned. in the draft, so let's bring you guys up to parity with that. Radiance ban. So some quick notes about Sivo. Again, if you're just joining in, this is our last week before we take a break for the holidays. That's right. We return after tomorrow's games. We're out and we return the January week of the January 1st. Ten seconds so to go. All that will come in due time. Our ticket was supposed to drop today, and I'm still keeping an eye that avidly over to... Uh, the updates to make sure that it's not some separate update because it wasn't released with the uh, the big shifting snow update, which is kind of a bummer. I was really hoping that the ticket would drop today, but uh, beggars can't be choosers, I guess. Go. And some things, I guess, are better Radiance left to wait man. for. So that will be coming out as soon as Valve is uh, as soon as Valvely possible, and who knows how long that is. So we'll just have to wait and see. Back to the game, though. We've got an Omni Knight big. Brewmaster taken out by Guess. The Justice League get rid of Viper Tidehunter. So, I guess the Reds versus the Greens ban out. We got a little bit of a, a, a holiday theme coming out with that one. Maybe, maybe not. Still haven't seen too much in terms of uh, heavily meta-influenced uh, Pixar bans. Like, I've got the change log right up here i did it use it for last game if any Ten hero that comes up go. that did get a little bit of an adjustment then i will point it out but five seconds still we're falling victim to the whole day the patch is released syndrome where most uh radiance pit. most teams will just go with what is comfortable and not really venture out until they're given enough time to really absorb the new patch and to uh, understand exactly what it does. So Vengeful Spirit comes out first again. So we'll hear that is still pretty popular. And all that happened, Wave of Terror cooldown was increased from 50, 15 seconds to 20. So it's not quite as spammable, but doesn't exactly hinder the hero Ten seconds to too go. much as Wave of Terror, you really only need it once Five every seconds. okay, once every 20 or so seconds for it to get your full effect off of it. So. Reserve time. It really is no hindrance to her. I mean, the debuff duration lasts 20 seconds anyway, so why not have the cooldown be 20 seconds? Uh, the Justice League, though, we'll see what they want to go for first. They know that their guests could decide to go for a bit of a minus armor strategy right now with that initial Vengeful Spirit pickup, and it wouldn't be too bad of a strat to go if you can pick up something like a uh, Visage Drow. With that Venge, you can deal a lot of damage just straight out of auto attack. So you can go for something like a Lycan and Dazzle and go for early game push and minus armor to take team fights that way. But the, the options are wide open. But what is going to happen is the Justice League are going to go face pick. first into the Shifting Snows and pick up a Witch Doctor and a Crystal Maiden. Now, Witch Doctor didn't see too much of anything. In fact, didn't see anything but Crystal Maiden. Well, she got a nice little uh, nice little care package. So she got an extra slow on her Crystal Nova. Frostbite cooldown was rescaled so that the more you level it, the lower the cooldown, Ten which is incredible, by the way. It makes chasing with her so much easier. Five seconds. And it just it increases her ability to just lock down someone in lane more and more often. Reserve time. Freezing Field, though, is the big kicker. It's 10 seconds Dyer's long now, man. and the radius was increased for both the damage and... And the um, the slow radius, so those are Radiance both band. really nice little buffs there. You can even see, um, I think my overlay blocks most of it, so you can't see, but I can even see exactly what it does. So it's a really, really gr good amount of changes that come out to her. Maybe we see her more often, but we'll definitely see her right here, go. right now. Puck gets picked up. Uh, guess want to go Five ahead seconds. and run him. And, well, speaking of heroes that didn't really get changed much, Puck 
is pretty Reserve much the same. Time. I mean, you can go back and try to find some indirect changes with like um, with the blinks or yules or things along those lines, but face value, the hero is pretty much the same. Uh, is doing pretty well against some of the more standard mids nowadays. I've seen, uh, I think it was uh, Leo Style on Union Gaming has he played it twice in both the games I've watched and is absolutely phenomenal with the hero and can make things happen really well. No, actually, no. Leo Style played it the first game I watched. It was Greedy, another person on his team that played the puck. I thought it was going to be Leo Style in the draft, but they picked up a TA and that was it, but... Either way, Puck, pretty versatile, Puck can play in uh, either the Radiant's offlane or the mid bad. and make good use of uh, her skills that way. So a very generally well-rounded hero. Naga Siren faces Void taken out by Guess. The Justice get rid of the Phantom Assassin. And well, the, along the lines of banning Ten out carries, we might see go. something like a Spectre and Anti-Mage get banned out if that's what their idea is. Um, Lycanthrope might see some hate here, but... In general, I think they're going to go for reserve time. Maybe the visage, maybe the drow ban, because already, I mean, you've got a puck and a vengeful spirit, two heroes that hurt with range damage, and they're just going to go straight for the spectre. Radiant's so pick. they want to get rid of some of the late game damage they have. There isn't much of a global strat coming out from guests, but they do have two heroes that, when roaming, can make a sort of quasi uh, global coming out. So that is probably not going to happen as well it's definitely not going to happen uh, specter is gone uh, again the drow visage is still here and drow um, visage and vengeful go. spirit combine pretty well together the slow sets up uh Five vengeful seconds. spirits miss the uh, magic missile and very well and in general they just work in tandem to Reserve zone time. and effectively destroy whatever lane they're going up against through just a very good and wide skill set. And once those birds come out, if you've got a drow and you've got the Vengeful Spirit's aura, Vengeance aura, you uh, you end up doing a ton of damage. So we'll have to see if that does come out or if the better Justice League want to go and deny those heroes in these picks. But I wouldn't doubt if that strategy we see. They're going to go ahead and grab the Centaur Dyer's War Runner. Pick. Kind of their uh, their way of saying, okay, you wanna you wanna go for Maya's armor and damage. Well, I'm gonna pick up a guy that can tank through all of that. And if he picks up something like a blade mail, not only does he tank through all of it, but he ends up killing you faster than you kill him. So, given some pretty good armor, some high HP, and uh, built correctly, some really good magic resistance, he will be a, a pretty heavy player in this Ten game. Ten seconds to go. But. He starts out fairly uh, not squishy, but not the strongest laner at the early levels. He does he, if he picks up a stout, maybe some early boots, he'll be able to survive, but not in, do too much other than that. If he gets a free lane though, one v one versus a melee hero, he can just go to town on you, and it, there really is nothing you can do about it. So I think they want to avoid sending the centaur into a 1v1, maybe throw their tri lane against them and find some easy kills with Avenge Puck. They're going to go ahead and grab Radiant's the uh, Ember pick. Spirit pretty quickly uh, in this, and that leads me to uh, believe that maybe this is going to be the offlane Puck, and they run a mid Ember. Dyer's pick. Or they could run a safe lane Ember with a mid Puck. It's really, I, I mean, it's a great pickup to have because it kind of plays around with the boundaries a little bit and you can't exactly identify what their overarching strategy is going to be but ember in general not seeing too much of a change centaur as well juggernaut though he did get some uh, agility buffs so he's got an extra couple of agility from um, his Damn base that actually secures him one extra point of armor in the early levels Five because seconds. it changes it to a um, magnet uh, past 21 it's 20 to 26 21 is Reserve the um, threshold, I think, for that extra point of armor. So now it's 26. He'll grab some extra oomph there and also some extra early game damage. Radiant's the critical band. chance is increased by 5% early on, which is nice, but typically jugs don't go for the uh, blade dance, at least not incredibly early on. But we may start seeing it come into play. Ten I don't know. It go. might be trying to say... Uh, Ice Frog trying to say, yo, you should probably get this skill seconds. early, but we never know. Beastmaster, though, that's a that's a fun change. And it, I'm kind of wondering to go. 
If gas are gonna run something like a life sealer with it, no, they Five couldn't. Seconds. Beastmaster is too much of a core to run a life sealer with. I think their three cores are already picked up, and they're gonna that grab another bad. support. And with the uh, Jakiro getting banned out by the Justice, they think so too. But Beastmaster, I, 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 it'd be impossible to go over everything right now. But just to sum it up, really quickly, Call of the Wild will spawn a level of both the boar and the eagle. At every Radiant's level. Pick. So level one, he gets a level one boar, level one eagle, two, level two boar, level two eagle, and so on and so forth. And they scale pretty much accordingly. So that is pretty big. Having vision constantly from uh, from level one and Call of the Wild, having that nice slow constantly from level one and Call of the Wild, and then it scaling up in tandem really helps the hero make some not Dash have to pick. worry too much about his skill usage in that department. And... I mean, leveling up to level four is always worth it instead of just going to three and getting a max and one and leaving the other kind of unattended for for a bit. But it makes every level worth it is pretty much what it gets down to. Warlock gets picked up by the better Justice League. Has some cast range increases. Uh, aside from that, I'm not quite sure I can uh, Ten seconds to go. narrow it down. Yeah, just cast range increase on the Fatal Bonds and the Radius increase Five pretty seconds. heavily. It's going to mean that this AoE damage lineup from uh, the better Justice League might Reserve just be time. a little bit too much for guests. Uh, if they get themselves caught within the Golem, the Chaotic Offering, then to get hit by a stomp and get trapped in the, in the Freezing Field, all this damage is going to be transferred through the Fatal Bond. So with all this damage, all these chains, all these AoEs, it's going to be a very, very nice spell to have. Plus the slow is nothing to scoff at, especially versus guest genes, which rely heavily on their ability to maneuver around the fight. So, a very new meta team coming out from the Better Justice League. We'll have to see how new meta it is and how much it works. But guess they're keeping it fairly safe. The Beastmaster, the only thing that I see that's really different. I mean, he has been picked up a couple of times recently. Nothing too... Uh, innovative, but I mean, not as often as a lot of other heroes, so something new, something fresh and uh, sort of different as we see what their last pickup is going to be, again, probably going to be a support whether we see new meta support or we see the same old, same old is up Ten to them, Crystal to Maiden go. really was the uh, was the kicker here so maybe we see a line, Five he seconds. got a nice little bit of uh, extra damage, the reserve time though is running out at, whoa Okay. This is a new one. At least we haven't seen something like this in a while. Um, Magnus is, is picked here. So, that's really nice for the Ember Spirit, I have to say. Because not having to pick up a BKB, I mean, BK, uh, I'm sorry, a, a Battle Fury is pretty huge. It opens up his next item really, qu uh, really well, and I mean, it's 50% grief at full level. Like, that's crazy good. So, I don't know. I'm I'm really excited to see this one come out. He's got a pretty neat set on this one, too. So, yeah, we'll have to see how bad, how well that comes into play. Uh, we saw the Juggernaut, our man, Banana Slam Jamma, talking about change, uh, the changes to this hero. Speaking of which, Banana Slam Jamma, he's going to be on the Juggernaut with Rainbow Dashing on the Crystal Maiden. Uh, not too far behind is Das Baraju on the Witch Doctor with Crixus on the Warlock. And Shay Doctor will be playing the Centaur War Runner. Meanwhile, JW on the Beastmaster picked up the early level and uh, early boots there. He's moving really quickly, 360 movement speed. 295, though, on Problematic Vengeful Spirit. YS will be on the Ember Spirit, sitting in the top lane with the mid Magnus on Sumail. And finally, the off lane Puck. So this, is, this it had to be a support Beastmaster, but it was not something that I, um, I got. Okay, I expected it, but I don't know how well this will work. I'm excited to see how it's going to pan out as one rune looks like it's going to be and secured by off. the bottom. Uh, problematic, going to grab the top, though, so some extra gold How going their way. Banana Slam Jamma, though, going to take this one to the bank and be pretty happy with that extra no extra bets, surplus. Please. He's about halfway through his level one. 
So there he's going to be uh, moving away with that one. Pretty uh, pretty good stuff. I like that change to the bounty runes. And it, it brought in an interesting dynamic in the last game that we watched where they the first blow was actually facilitated by the fact that the teams were fighting over that rune. So the team that actually got the rune gave away the first blood. Whether or not it was worth it, probably not, but... It's pretty interesting. Crixus has taken the mid, so a mid war uh, warlock. Not a terribly different, like, I, we've seen it a couple of times, but I don't think we've ever really seen it being played competitively that often, so. It's the only real place I could see it being played competitively, to be honest, though. I mean, the hero relies so much on levels and the, the farm for his golems that you almost have to run him where he can uh, get some guaranteed farm and uh, XP, so. Snake King sitting in the top lane, going to get harassed out, and Maledict comes out, but he, I don't think he even cares. One auto attack, and he's got Dasperju. Going to back himself off, though, fearing that Banana Slam Jamma turns on him, and uh, Dasperju is going to have to sit back behind and worry about this orb from Snake King. If Snake King guesses correctly or even catches slight wind of this Witch Doctor, he could grab an easy and early kill onto him, and that, that's not exactly something you want to do. He's going to sit close by, though, with Maledict ready to go again, but uh, I'm not quite sure they can actually find a kill. Now he's got his level 2 into the Voodoo Restoration and back up to full, so he should be just fine. Taking a look back to the mid lane. Looks like Warlock is at not finding the farm as well as he'd hope. He's hitting two last hits to Ember Spirit's 9. Or, sorry, to Sumail the um, Magnus' 9. That is... A very big disparity. 11, actually. 12 now. So he's getting really out CS. He's got the same base damage, and he's a ranged hero. So it's a little bit more difficult for him because of the fact that he has to time that projectile speed. But he might be in a little bit of trouble because JW sitting up back behind him does have the Whirling Axes and has the boar for the slow. But looks like he's going to just make his way up top, go for the backstab. On to Shade Doctor. But again, this kill is going to be very difficult. He's a tanky hero. and They will grab the slow initially off on him. It's a very inconsequential uh, slow. He pops out the stomp and grabs Problematic. But the magic missile flies out. Now the damage isn't quite there. In fact, Problematic could just drop here. First blood going the way of Shade Doctor. Tanking tower is not something you want to do. So he'll just go down straight up. One for one is the uh, result of that, but just as better, obviously getting the better end of that solo XP going the way of the Centaur and that first blood gold. Das Berju hanging off in the sidelines, though, constantly trying to harass out Snaking, but Snaking's base damage is a little bit better. So, uh, not really a little bit better. His HP pool is a little bit higher, though, Radiance so he can trade a, little, uh, a lot hits. better with the Witch Doctor, though. He's got to constantly be careful of the Juggernaut waiting on the back lines. Problematic, though, is also waiting, watching. I don't know if he can actually make a successful attempt at a kill here, but he's certainly going to hang by close and make sure that no attempt is made on Snake King's life. His top lane is going pretty well. Centaur is at level 3. He's got the Arcane Aura, so... He's going to be able to get uh, pretty much uh, whatever he wants from that lane. There's going to be a Blade Fury to dodge out the magic missile and now a one for one jw finds shay doctor and is gonna have to run himself away for 360 movement speed to the 360 of shay and he will be able to get out uh outrun or at least not out keep up and barely stay ahead of the centaur war runner and that's uh that's nice for him but at the same time i mean having to run away from the centaur war runner and missing the rune as a result just not exactly the best thing for him, as Rainbow Dashing takes to the jungle and starts farming up some jungle creeps, is actually stacked this camp and still has taken both of the big creeps, so. He's looking pretty good right now. Verju gonna throw out the casket, but they will be able to get away. The orb snaking sends it out before the casket hits, and he's just fine for some reason uh, for all the right reasons, and now he's just right back in the lane. Problematic is hanging by close. Taking a quick look at the mid lane before something erupts down here. Crixus is falling way behind Sumail. Tripled up by Sumail's last hits. And the net worth really shows. The difference is pretty huge by about 1,000. That's a very wide margin for this, so... Uh, this Magnus. And he's not going any points in Empower just yet, which 
I mean, it makes sense. He usually wants to get his uh, Shockwave up in the skewer for when RP is ready to go. And he just doesn't really have to work in tandem with YS, at least for a long time. So the cleave is not something any uh, very important for him. And, well, he's just fine farming it up right now. I mean, there's nothing really c to contest him. And he's got very, very good last hits for a mid laner up against a ranged hero. So a melee mid laner up against a ranged hero for that matter. And the shockwave for us is very, very nice. So. Shea Doctor is going to get found by YS and Problematic, but nothing to happen with that one. They back himself away in due time. One to one at six minutes. Things are starting out pretty slowly, but the Golden XP graph definitely turning south, even slightly, is uh, still an advantage. So It looks like uh, guests have a nice uh, early game. Pseudo lead as Rainbow Dashing and Das Berry want to try to go onto YS. Now he doesn't, he has his level six, so he can get himself away with this if he can fire out a remnant. And he does get it. The Searing Chains hits on both Rainbow Dashing and Das Berry, and they get hit by the Whirling Axes, but, or sorry, the, um, the Wild Axes, and they take a big chunk of damage, but they get away. The Voodoo Restoration, they're bringing them up pretty f uh, near full, so. It looks like our Witch Doctor Dasperger will still get back to base, though. As Shea Doctor getting harassed out by the boar. The damage over time, as I said, is really good. The slow is incredible, though. 20% right now. And lots of... Uh, lots of birds and stuff hanging close by the mid lane. They're keeping tabs on Crixus. They want to try to kill him very soon and if not kill him just make sure that he's not ganking and finding an early kill with his chaotic offering uh snaking trying to get away in the bottom lane but the omni slash was there and the phase shift was not quite timed correctly gets himself away meanwhile jw going on to rainbow dashing turkey taking a lot of damage shade doctor might also Radiant's fall here they don't have any more searing hits. chains so he gets himself away for the time being no level six on jw either so they get one kill, and they back themselves off, not able to push the tower just yet. That sends the score as a two for two, and uh, Guess pretty happy to be taking that one. Again, securing their lead further and further. And Crixus so far hasn't been able to make anything really happen with his ultimate. He hasn't casted it once, and he's struggling to stay close to this mid lane. The uh, Shockwave spam is absolutely killing him from the inside out. Meanwhile, stacks and pull through happening in the jungle, but they get spotted out by snaking. An orb flies through. It will not connect on Das Berju, but he'll still pop the um, the dream coil. Now they don't think they're going to be spending anything more for this one. He pops out the um, paralyzing cast, and the chaotic offering comes through. Sumail, he's not going to die here, but oh, actually, he could get a kill. Das Berju barely evades it, and with the chaotic offering coming out, snaking. Could just die here. He will phase shift to try to get rid of some of the damage coming in, but it won't matter. A phase shift popped to get snaking. Uh, pretty good for them, though. The cooldown is there. Das Berju still alive with the healing ward and the Voodoo Restoration. A very nice um, juke coming out from him, hanging by where he doesn't get shockwave down. And they get him away, which is very surprising. A haste strewn on the Magnus, but... It was smart of Magnus not to pursue for that kill. Doing so would have been incredibly greedy. And Sumail actually has RP. No skewer on, so he can't skewer into RP. And there's no follow-up. Even if he did, maybe now we see some. Dream Curl still out for 30 seconds. They're Delta splitting up. They don't want to get hit by this RP. A TP comes in. And the tower goes down. YS hanging close. But Paralyzing Cast going to stop him right in his tracks. So that will disengage the bottom lane here. By looking towards the mid lane, Problematic has been taking some solo XP in the meantime and is getting dangerously close to his level 6 that will open up a whole new world for Team Guest. Snaking, though, going to send out his orb and just kind of jukes it out. doesn't even matter. He's still dead no matter what he did. Some good movement coming out from Justice and Snaking dies again. And I don't know whether this is a jab at them trying to put him on tilt or not, but... If I was Snake King, I'd certainly be uh, be screaming some apart. obscenities right now. He is 0-3 right now with 12 last hits. Sitting at level 6, which isn't bad. His Dream Call is going to be doing a lot in these fights, hopefully. But 
just constantly dying, and that's not really something he wants to be doing. The tower will go down tier one, one mid to Sumail. Uh, YS actually the one to grab that last hit. And now all of the uh, the summons starting to take a fall here. That's an extra 30 gold going the way of our Crystal Maiden. So Rainbow Dashing going to be putting that one right there in the bank. Sitting on Tranquil Boots level 4 with the Arcane Aura. Is looking pretty good on her magic regeneration. 2.9 per second for her. Uh, and adding another uh, 1 mana regen per second to everyone else. Meanwhile, Banana Slam Jammer farming incredibly well. He's got his trades and drums up. That's six charges on the drums, by the way, so not going to have to buy any recipe anytime soon. Three points in Blade Fury, opting for the one in uh, his healing ward, so. But he's going to see a backstab. Sumail and Problematic now are going to go on this one. He does not have Omni, um, Omni Slash yet. They're going to start to pop an RP, but not get it. Now they swap him into the RP. And he is most certainly dead. Snaking will grab that kill, so puts himself on the board. And gives himself some much-needed experience in gold now, sitting at 1,000. Close to the blink, about halfway, though. Not close enough for an 11-and-a-half-minute game on Puck. Centaur, Shea Doctor, is ahead of him right now. 1,350 gold. Problematic might be in... Oh, I'm sorry. Rainbow Dashing might be in a little bit of trouble there. TPing in by Shea Doctor, but he's not going to be able to defend his Crystal Maiden. In fact, he might actually just straight up die here. He's got some mana. He can drop down a stun. In comes uh, Warlock and Crixus. Maybe looking for a chaotic offering right now, but the rest of guests, they read the writing on the wall and they back themselves off. So some good awareness coming out from them. And they avoid what could have been a disastrous attempt on uh, Shea Doctor's life. So taking a quick look at the grass, we're still uh, pretty low on the kill count. It's only 8 kills in 12 minute game, but Guess have taken a 3k goal lead. Net worth is about even with Justice taken probably just shy of a 20 to 30 experience lead. So they're looking really good, at least given the uh, goal lead that uh, Guess have accrued. They're still fighting pretty well and they're maintaining their experience, so... I mean, they're not falling behind in any real sense of the word. For a 12-minute game, only 3K gold lead is uh, not much. So, And that can really be attributed ultimately to the fact that Warlock fell so far behind of the Magnus. Given everyone, if everyone else had equal XP to their counterparts, there'd be a 2K advantage just because of how much uh, Sumail has ahead of Crixus. So. Pretty interesting there. Das Baraju will drop here. They use a swap to get in. That was that solo XP in the mid lane coming into play. We already saw a swap into an RP, so they're pretty happy about that kill. It's a Witch Doctor, but, I mean, a Witch Doctor is better than nothing. And this kind of cripples the uh, Ray Justice League's ability to try to defend this as Centaur gets killed by a melee creep. Interesting. There was an attempt Radiant to blink in and skewer back Rainbow Dashing. He'll still get hit by the Searing Chains. In comes the Wave of Terror, but they can't quite seal the deal. At least not yet. It looked like Sumail was ready to blink back and try for the uh, Shockwave, but blinking into uh, into Justice League is not really a smart idea. And, oh man, that's a... They expected the ward, but instead found a bird. And that gives about the um, same goal that they were hoping for. Maybe a little extra XP, so... That's a win on their part. <laughs> bounty rune being found by Snaking. I think that's, uh, that's one of many bounty runes he's gotten so far. There's going to be a haste popped up by Ember Spirit, though, and he's going to be able to use that to try to chase and fire him kills. His Empower already up. 20% cleave right now, still approaching what he would get with Battle Fury, and that's Somebody's really cooking. good. Snaking finding a kill in the bottom lane on the Juggernaut. Looks like uh, RP was used for that one. Maybe another, not a swap, but uh, RP definitely helps. The Blink RP is going to open up a lot of space in there. Sitting in uh, the Justice League's jungle right now, farming it up, so that shows to their uh, magic, uh, their map control right now, and they're looking pretty good on the back of that one. NS or YS is looking for Das Berju. So much damage coming out, he just gets cleaned to bits and backs himself off. There's a haste rune on him, so he's still very aggressive. Could look for more if he wanted to, but there's no one close by to give it to him. 
Now we see a teleport come in from Banana Sam Jamma. Maybe he wants to try to throw an Omni Slash on, but with uh, YS able to remnant out at any given time, it's not going to be able to do too much as YS is actually making his way towards the mid lane. His team in the uh, Justice League's jungle, but not close Radiant's to the battle zone. Shade Doctor will get days. hit by the Searing Chains. YS is going to have to remnant himself out of there, and it looks like. Nah, he's just going to run away. Banana Slam Jamma on the chase, Trouble though. Buying space for tower. his team to clean up the bottom tier 2 tower. But in comes the fortified. defense. It's going to be Crixus, the one to head it off. Rainbow dashing, following in close behind with Dash Bearju also hanging close. But the tower will live to see another day as guests back themselves off for the time being. Uh, looks like Snaking checking out the Roche Pit, or at least looking at it, but... Not quite sure they can take it just yet. They need everyone, or at least the Beastmaster there, to bring it down. But with Wave of Terror, they should be able to clean him up fairly quickly. The Maya's armor is not something to scoff at, so... We'll have to see if Roshan is on the menu anytime soon. Rainbow Dashing and Das Berju, meanwhile, just farming up the jungle. And it, it's helping them out a little bit. It's giving Witch Doctor some extra gold. He's sitting at 1,200 gold, so... If he's rushing for the Aghanim Scepter, he'll get it out fairly soon. And... There is a Battle Fury that does get completed on YS, by the way, so he didn't have to go for the Battle Fury this game, but now with Battle Radiant Fury and Overpower, the cleave right is crazy. So we'll start to see some team fights just getting ripped Radiant apart by the team if they can get the proper right group uh, or find the pro proper group up from the Justice League. A swap out from Das Berju, though. Cleans him up pretty quickly, but they will get the Chaotic Offering down in the meantime. After Das Berju is still alive, drops down the Death Ward, but isn't able to find anything with it. Instead, they're going to go ahead. Uh, Crystal Maid Rainbow Dashing finds Sue Mail. JW will end up cleaning up uh, Das Berju in the meantime. Snaking going under a Sentry Ward and won't be able to get away as the Stomp and the Double Edge are both there. There, a three for one, and Shay Doctor grabbing a double kill throughout the mess, and about 2,500 gold, 2,500 experience flying the way of the Justice League. Uh, JYS finding Crixus in the top lane. Crixus is going to back himself off, but YS, he does have a remnant ready to go. Shay Doctor's here, but with no mana for a stomp. A double edge though does come out, and now oh. Remnanting out there was uh, a bit questionable. He could have killed uh, Shay Doctor there, but in the heat of the moment. The right Radiant's decision for him. And bad shape. Any given thing could have straight up killed him had he gone right back or stayed in a little bit too long. But just one Radiant's auto attack away. As Ben Sam Jamma gets skewered back by Sumail, not able to get the Blade Fury off in time. And the swap out will bring him right back in. They're going to pop out the Orban with a Dream Coil. They bring him down. So Banana Sam Jamma now to getting the Puck treatment as he dies another time to a uh, straight off gank. And that's definitely not helping his farm. He did pick up a Yasha and is looking decent on the farm board, but he's dropped a couple spaces. And I mean, it's gonna be hard for him to keep up with uh, JW and I'm sorry, with YS and Sumail now that they're both alive and farming. And uh, well, he's, he's gone, so. And aside from that, the uh, guests are farming the Justice League's jungle quite efficiently so their map control looking really good and I mean the ability for the Justice League to find farm is starting to get smaller Radiant and smaller guess is zoning them out days. really effectively one of the biggest strategies of this game is being able to confine your target to a point where they just they, they can't leave the map unless they group up as five and then they run the risk of taking a team fight they can't take so Roshan attempt, number one, coming out from Guess, And even with the Minus Armor, it is going a bit slow. JW is here, but he's taken a lot from Roshan. Now, uh, the ward didn't really spot this out. It was a smoke underneath. So, JW snaking, both dropping very low. There's a freezing field going down, and snaking will just get cleaned by that. Problematic. They're going to pop the Omni Slash to stop the teleport, and they grab him. A three for nil so far, but in comes YS. They have an overpower. Or empower rather and they're gonna go ahead and try to cleave this down you can already see the damage from each of uh, sleight of fist is looking pretty good but still not overly incredible just yet a searing chains will lock das berju now the rp comes out but in comes chaotic offering das berju will still die a skewer onto the high ground and sumail traps them both uh but centaur 
Shade Doctor does have a uh, Blink Dagger, and he could just go into YS right now, if need be. Uh, waiting for Blink to come off, and will go for it, but Warlock Crixus will find him regardless. And Roshan should drop. Oh no, the Whirling Axes! And Roshan does kill Centaur War Runner. But in comes Snaking again, and Crixus is way out of control, out of position, and uh, Banana Slam Jamma also will go down. Roshan falling to guess. And Banana Slam Jamma does end up dropping, so. That was a really good skewer to the high ground, it turns out to be, and the Whirling Axe is definitely a huge player in that one, but... A double buyback required to make that fight possible, and it was, I guess, well worth it? Maybe, but Justice League came out way on top from that fight as they grabbed about 2k gold ahead of it, but the experience instead uh, drops, I think, a little bit to Guess's favor now, a little bit more as 1,000 goes away from that pickoff that they just got on to or yeah onto crystal made and they also got the tower that was denied but the tower is a tower even denied is still a good chunk of gold i think it's going to slow down for a little bit we've accelerated on the kills uh we're now at 27 and 21 minutes so looking really good in that department a lot of action coming out guests still have a gold advantage now the experience advantage advantage in their favor Ray again, approaching 10k gold, uh, about 5k experience, so really good for them. 21 minutes in, that's a nice substantial lead, but it's not something that is uh, impenetrable to throws. so we'll have to see whether or not Justice can play Ray the defense game, or if this up. overpowered YS is just way too strong to deal with, that Roche fight. Obviously not helping them out. They go for the deny, don't quite Radiant get it. And now they try to trouble. find more rainbow dashing, takes a lot of damage from the sleight of fist, but JW wasn't quite there to follow up and not quite sure you want to spend all that on a uh, Christmas main anyway, but they will blink up, get the RP, and bring both supports down. <laughs> down without buyback and for an equal Return amount of time. And that opens up the high ground. Hand. They're just gonna push straight on up. They don't really care. Dyer's With two supports down. Uh, chaotic Offering is still down for about 10 seconds. To They're going to glyph. They want to wait for this Chaotic, but Radiant's maybe waiting for both of to come back is a smarter idea. Dyer's they will be back maybe before the racks go down. Dyer's and in comes Snaking. They find Shade Doctor. Chaotic Offering has to be spent, but Shade Doctor is still dead. The Chaotic Offering will go down, and now the Omni Slash comes through, but a couple of unlucky balances, and he doesn't end up cleaning up anyone. Yule Scepter up uh, on top, and uh, a turnaround with a Magic Missile off from Problematic. Now skewering Banana Slam Jammer on the low ground. He'll go down, but Problematic will drop as well. Still not quite the defense they had in mind, as the Justice League now are scrambling to bring themselves to a point of uh, contention here. Contention and... YS comes back, no overpower this time, but still just looking strong and not really worried. He's got a uh, Remnant back, and he's just going to go straight onto the tower. That's uh, the racks, rather. I mean, he's just kind of sitting here taking through all of it. Now, they stomp, they paralyze and cast, but he remnants out immediately. He even has an Aegis, so he's not really, he's not in any trouble right now. Goes straight back in, straight back out. Making full use of this Aegis, too, with 20 seconds, uh, sorry, a minute, about over a minute left to go on this one. He's just keeping the creep wave pushed out. That gives time for his team to go back to base, heal themselves up, and now they're right back and ready to fight again. And this is dangerous. Banana Sam Jamma will drop straight in for Paul Mac, but ends up going on with the Blade Fury to get himself out. YS, though, the Sight of Fist doing a lot of damage. Pulling Rainbow Dashing out is to mail, and they grab the kill there. Meanwhile, there's a Dream Cloud out on the Crixus. He should just straight up drop here. A Death Ward comes out, and Problematic could end up dying here, but the Death Ward gets canceled by the Yule Scepter. And now Crixus goes down. YS has the Aegis still. Doesn't get reclaimed for a little bit of time, so if they bring him down now, it doesn't really matter much, but he's got to be careful because it is expiring soon, and it will go down. He ends up popping it. Buyback comes out from Das Berju, but... I mean, what well, good can it do? Shade Doctor's just going to straight up die in YS. Finds that kill with an Ultra. Maybe gets a Rax here. They go ahead, they get the RP, and now definitely no, uh, no Rampage. But the GG's come out, 
and the Justice League tap out. They had a really strong early showing. There goes the dive but when it came down to mid-game execution, the team fight of Guess was just a lot stronger. Their execution was a little bit more on point, and their draft just started to fit into place. So, applaud Justice League for trying to be a little uh, new meta. But when it comes down to Ember Spirit, Magnus plus Battle Fury is a little bit too much to deal with. And let's not even talk about that Roshan fight. So, some really good fighting coming out and some great, great games already happening today. Our next game of the night is going to be uh, Together We Did It versus E-Hug. So, I'm really excited about that one. That'll be coming up. And about 25 or so minutes, the official game time is 10.15 ESC, uh, EST. So stick around for that. We'll have more SIVO action coming up soon.